trying to help brain cells to adapt to their mitochondrial defects. The thing that we would ideally like to do is begin treating people quite early on in their disease. So an important thing to sort of go alongside my research is this research trying to find ways to predict who will be affected by the disease so that we can begin treating while there's still lots of brain cells to protect um, and help you know, them to survive as they accumulate their mitochondrial defects. So I think for me it's about protecting the brain cells that we've got rather than reversing, so slowing down the progression or hopefully ultimately halting it, I think. Mm. Claire, do you want to say something about where we are with identifying people at that much earlier stage before they've gone to clinic with symptoms? Um, yeah, I think it's a really big priority for Parkinson's UK. So one of our really interesting studies we're doing at the moment um, is looking at people between the age of 60 and 80 who do not have Parkinson's, but obviously if you're in that age bracket, you're at an age where you're more likely to develop it. And we're looking for clues that can tell us whether some of those people are at higher risk of Parkinson's or even in the very early stages. So um, it's an amazing study. They're doing things like doing smell tests, sending smell tests in the post to people who do scratch and sniff smell tests because one of the early symptoms of Parkinson's is losing your sense of smell for many people, not everyone, but a lot of people. And they're also doing things like surveys on, on the internet and also tapping tests, so, so, so to pick up any changes in the speed and accuracy of people's movements. And they are finding a lot of success with this approach and they think they're identifying people much earlier who are in the very early stages of Parkinson's. So mm. hopefully we're getting closer to predicting Parkinson's as well. Mm. Do you want to just, Monty, from an almost clinical perspective, describe what happens with, you know, when, when you see people and where, where they are on that kind of progression of, of brain, losing brain cells? Well, we know that Parkinson's disease is due to basically damage to nerve cells in, in the part of the brain called the substantia nigra. And it's been shown quite a lot now in research studies that you have lost probably 60 or 70 percent of these nerve cells in the substantia nigra before you present to someone like myself with Parkinson's disease. So there's really quite a long lag before when the disease is progressing, uh, uh, before you actually develop the mobility problems that takes you to, to a specialist such as myself. So it is a key thing to try and catch people earlier on. And there are one or two clues. Uh, for example, we've talked about losing sense of smell. That's actually very common. Uh, and the vast majority of cases is not due to Parkinson's disease, but I think anything up to about 10% of people who lose a sense of smell in kind of in middle to kind of later life, it could be the start of Parkinson's disease. There's other things like there's a condition called REM sleep behavior disorder, where people start acting out your, their dreams. When you go to bed and you dream in bed at night, you're paralyzed when you dream, so you don't move but sometimes this paralysis mechanism can break down, so you think you're saving a penalty in the World Cup final, and you suddenly dart your hand out like that, and people start moving around in bed, and that can actually be an early symptom of Parkinson's disease as well. And when you start to add all these things up, the sleep thing, the loss of sense of smell, then you, and maybe other things, you can start to find these people earlier, but before they get to kind of 60, 70% of loss of the nerve cells. Well, I don't know if, um some of the mitochondrial treatments could, if, if the cell's still there, but maybe is struggling, it could potentially help save some of those cells that may be on the road to, to being lost, possibly. But obviously, we're funding lots of different research projects that um, some of which are looking at completely different ways that we can look at um, even repairing the brain in Parkinson's. So things like stem cell therapies is probably the sort of the simplest and, and most exciting idea that's out there at the moment. So that's using stem cells to grow completely brand new dopamine producing nerve cells which are 100% healthy and using those to transplant into the brains of people with Parkinson's. Um, we're still very much at the lab stage of doing that. Um, there aren't any clinical trials happening yet, but we hope that there will be soon, and, and that could be a really fruitful area um, to explore. And then we're also, we are funding trials, um, looking at drugs, uh, one drug in particular called GDNF, which is a growth factor, which is a chemical um, that is naturally produced inside the brain um, that actually helps cells survive and, and regrow even, and that's what it seems to do in the lab, and we're testing that in, in people with Parkinson's in Bristol. Um, 
and we've done another lecture about that previously, which you can watch online. Um, and, and we're really excited about that because um, it could possibly, um, we hope, not only have the power to slow Parkinson's, but maybe even make people a little bit better as well. But obviously the trial's running and we don't know what the results are yet, so we'll keep you posted. So Parkinson's UK's uh, five-year plan is to make a significant increase in the amount of, uh, of money we actually spend on research directly ourselves. But it's Who is it that loses their sense of smell on, on route? Who is it that has disturbed, disturbed sleep? Who is it that has a specific gene? And actually that's quite exciting because that means in the future potentially we can target treatment